In this video I'll be lining the forge with refractory. First I need to make the inner form. I started by cutting out some strips of 12mm MDF. And it didn't take me long to give up on the handsaw. I should have really hooked the vacuum cleaner up for this though. The MDF dust got everywhere. Top and bottom discs of the form were marked out. And then cut out. It was then persuaded together. The top of the bone needed a bigger hole drilled. I left it so late because I wasn't sure what burner I'd go with. The hole the drill was leaving wasn't very good so I decided to uh, use a cone drill that I bought a while back. the first time I had to drill a hole this big in sheet metal. Despite pushing it too fast, it still left a nice hole. I wanted to make a tapered wooden plug to form a flare of sorts for the burner in the refractory. I went about making this on the lathe. Chips really did get everywhere. The vacuum was doing now to contain them, and I eventually gave it a try. Turning wood like this is pretty fun though. It can take some extremely aggressive cuts. I roughed the taper in by hand at first and then sanded it smooth. a few tries to get this shank to fit properly. Found me old photo portfolio from college. 
sat in a few lessons to see if it was my kind of thing and signed up for the air level the next year. But it got cancelled after only one of the persons signed up for it. I'm cutting it up because it's the only air plastic I could find that was about the right size. Went upstairs and came back with the cone layout and uh, marked that out and cut it out. It's oddly satisfying making cones. Trim the top with a stanley blade. I used to have a good one, but it went missing. Time to open up a cement bag. I'm wearing the respirator because I didn't want to get any dust in my lungs. I spent two days coughing up the MDF from last time. The bag's offered to me by a canny guy called Rob Wilson after I posted the first video. He's a fantastic machinist and I recommend you check out his posts on Mad Modder if you ever want to feel inadequate about your own machining. Now as per his recommendations, I mixed the bag of contents up a bit to try and get some of the pebbles from the bottom. You're supposed to use it a whole bag at a time. Try to mix it in a bucket at first, which was a terrible idea. The cement's real heavy and it takes a lot of effort to move it around, especially if you you know, not, not in shape like I am. Plan B was to dump on the rest of that plastic. Strange stuff. It starts off pretty dry looking once you mixed it, but once you start ramming it and vibrating, it starts to look a lot wetter. A real engineer might correct me, but I think you'd call it sheer thinning. Tap the edges of the thing to encourage the cement to settle level.
Next was lining the cone. Uh, first the top around the plug was rammed. Then the former was put in. I had all kinds of plans for keeping the former in perfect alignment, but in the end I realised that I'd just be able to hold it in place with the cement itself. I had to mix a few batches of cement as I went along. Finish leveling this one off on the bench top. And that's that for now. Now I just need to wait for it to set. I'm not sure how long that'll take though, but I covered them with plastic bags to try and keep the water in. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but yeah. I didn't use a lot of the refractory, so I ended up uh, putting the rest of it back in this plastic bag. Hopefully, it won't go hard before I get a chance to use it. Next, we fill them with a burner. I got the burner from the old oven, which has a nice venturi on it, but being natural gas, the orifice is pretty big. It's about 1.1mm. So I'll have a go making a new smaller one.